Hello, hello, Space Nicker here with another figure review. Today we have got the NECA Player Select Devil May Cry Dante. Man, I have been waiting for this figure for so long and he has been really in the works for a very, very long time. I think something like seven years they first announced this guy or something crazy like that. I might be wrong. This is basically hearsay. I don't actually know. I've not researched it myself. But since I saw the released images of the final product, I've been wanting this figure really, really badly. So i super stoked that I got this one. Now, unfortunately, I didn't get this off my usual NECA buyer. I got it from just a random eBayer who sold it. It came from China and it does seem to be the genuine article, although I haven't taken it out yet. Always due to buying from China, but you know, it was fairly cheap. I only paid a roughly about £25 posted, I think it was, so that's still a pretty good price. So, what do we think of Dante? There's no two ways about it. He's one of the badass characters ever in any video game. Such a cool character, such a cool attitude, such a cool gun, such a cool everything. Just, just, just a cool figure. So, let's have a closer look at the actual box. Now, have a look at the front cover. You can see that it's basically some art taken straight from the actual video game itself. Uh, this is a picture of Dante, and he does look very, very cool. Does say Devil May Cry up there. Player select, NECA, Capcom, and ages 17 up. Warning, choking hazards. Looking on the side, we have a picture of Devil, well, the logo Devil May Cry, Capcom, NECA, player select, and one of these things you collect throughout the game, which I can't think what they're called. That's going to annoy me. It has been a while since I last actually played the games. Scrolling to the side, the exact same thing. Looking on the back, you can see there is a quick little bio. I'll leave it there for you guys if you want to read it. Legend Tales of two millennia ago in a blah, 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 blah. <laughs> it's all action. Battle on sort of demons with Dante's sword, Alistair. Interchangeable guns and sword gripping hands. Inflicts devastating stack on enemies with shotgun and Dante's legendary twin pistols, ebony and ivory, with removable fire bursts. 30 points of articulation. Recreate all Dante's furious moves with his bone chilling super articulation. <laughs> I don't know why they make me laugh so much. Uh, down here we have the sculptors here Capcom, Necker, Player Select, and then a picture of. Trisha? God, it really has been a long time since I played these games. I need to crack out the HD release. And I can hear my cat meowing, so I do apologize if you can hear that too. On the top, just says Devil May Cry in Capcom. And the cool thing about this one is it does open to reveal the figure and a very, very, very cool pose of the actual. Let's get the shine out of the way first, the best I can. There you go. This is actually the figure here, you can see it's got joints, it's not actually a video game. It's a very, very, very cool pose of him, looks awesome. And of course, there's that figure, and we've got Ebony and Ivory, the Blast, the Shotgun, and the Sword, Alistar, and his big old coat. So, without further ado, let's crack this bad boy open. Having a quick look at the actual insert box art, that is very, very cool demonic statue there with some handles and whatnot. It's just on the back, the rest of it's black, but it's very thin cardboard. I don't think I've ever seen an insert so thin. I mean, it doesn't need to be thick, it's just decoration, but yeah, something to point out. And we are back. Oh my god, this thing is freaking awesome. Stop the video right now, go and buy this figure. Just just is that good. Really is. NECA has knocked this guy out of the park. NECA, I love you. Keep doing what you're doing because you're kicking butt. Now I've said that, he's still not without a few faults. Or rather, I don't want to say faults, I'll probably say more nitpicks to be honest. I'll go over the nitpicks now to get them out of the way while I think of them. The biggest one I have is the coat. It does look very, 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 very cool with the way it's swept. And it's very iconic because I think it was on, was it title screen? I think it was, or I can't remember. There's a, a screen where you see the coat swept like this way. And I think there's the guns crossed over like that or something. I can't remember. Like I said, it's been a long time since I played the game. 
but it does look very very cool and it is really well sculpted and really well done it is very back heavy very very back heavy and i believe it is removable i haven't attempted it yet i might do before this video is out just to show you guys i saw someone do a quick little video but i didn't want to watch it because i knew i was getting one where he did actually have two one with and one without the coat so that's the, that's probably the biggest nitpick i have and i may try and customize mine to put a soft lower on i don't know because it's a leather so i'd have to either paint my leather which is never good or try and find a red synthetic leather which is probably going to be even harder we shall see and we shall decide on that later right now freaking loving it second nitpick his wrist pegs are tiny he does have interchangeable hands as you can see he's got the sword hand on this one and the gun hand on this one they pop out very easily but the hole for them is so so tiny i will show you that in a bit and then i guess the third one is the only real other nitpick i have is the arm articulation he has a bicep rotation yes but also has an elbow rotation why what is the point of having these two joints they both do the exact same thing and they're less than an inch away from each other i don't understand when companies do that either give one or the other either give one or the other <laughs> but i'll go over that a bit more in articulation but that's it that's basically my annual nitpicks apart from that this guy is freaking phenomenal and i'm super super stoked to have him like i said stop the video and go and get this guy amazing figure absolutely amazing now he does come with quite a lot of accessories actually. He comes with, of course, the two pistols and the sword, four hands, two of these blast things and a shotgun. I've got the shotgun holding in hand here so I can show you kind of how it all kind of works. That is really awesome. Um, oh, I thought of another nitpick. I wish he had some kind of maybe a translucent or plastic or something on the coat to actually hold the sword there. That would be cool. Maybe even a magnet. But that would be very, very cool. Unfortunately, doesn't have it. Okay, so let's have a closer look at him and his accessories. Okay, first that about is his gun toting hand. Very, very cool. And what he's done is very smartly is because his gloves kind of come up to just about here, the wrist line, that's exactly where they've put the cut. So you're literally just taking his gloves off and on. Very, very cool. Now there is some really nice detail in these. There's some great leather shine, some lots of creases and crinkles, and they do look really, really nice. There's even some slight paint ups you can see there on the knuckles. Don't know whether that's coming over. I want to show you, but if I make my light closer, the camera goes all wavy. See? All wavy. Very weird. I need to look into that. I thought I'd solve that problem ages ago. But anyway. See here on this knuckle, very, very grey. Not so much on this one, there's a little bit here, but really well sculpted, great detail. And the guns fit in these, very, very nice. The next hands we have are the sword hands, and these ones again, very, very nice. There's some nice leather lines and creases and whatnot. Does look really, really good and very well done. There's that tiny little peg Carl's mentioning. And I'm going to show you that on putting these on now quickly. So here's the tiny little peg hole. Look at that. It's absolutely tiny. It doesn't really kind of click in. It kind of just kind of goes on. So there's a fist hand or a sword hand. And here is a gun hand. Oh, wrong gun hand. Here we go. But yeah, that no click, it just kind of slides on. Next course, you have ebony and ivory. These two are freaking awesome. Both identical in sculpt, but of course, definitely definitive and different paint apps. They look straight out of the comic. Unfortunately, I don't know if you can see here, I have a slight misprint of the little picture. I believe this is like a little painting of a something. I can't remember. I'm sure there's a painting or something on the grip there. But this one's just a bit off, which is unfortunate, and there's nothing I can really do about that. But in all, all, these are really, really nice, and they do fit in the hands really well, as you saw at the start of the video. And 
don't know if you notice the distinctive oh you know I was completely wrong the sculpt look the, the hammers round click the scope long round same as that longer round just in the sight there I honestly thought these were identical don't you just notice that as I was talking I think let me just check before I blow my own trumpet again Oh yeah, the chamber release is there on opposite sides as well. That is interesting. I did not notice that before. Ah, there you go. Very, very cool. But it actually shows you that that goes on his left and that goes on his right. Because you also always want the chamber release to go away from you. Next we have the shotgun. Very, very powerful weapon in the game. Very useful, especially those annoying ghosts. Mine's a little bit warped. Ever slightly, not too bad to be honest. They're not exactly a hard plastic, so I think they've done that distinct definitively so you can get them into the hands without any problems. But re sculpted, paint ups is really nice. Slight bleed though, unfortunately, this one a bit there and a bit of the silver going under there. Same on that side, almost like there's not enough wood rather. So a bit unfortunate, but apart from that, the sculpting is really nice. It has a nice gunmetal grey going throughout it. And everything's really, really nice with this. I do really love this weapon, and it's a nice addition. And Alistar. Look at this sword. Just look at this. This thing is huge, and it's awesome, and it's so intimidating. And it is just out of the comics. It looks freaking phenomenal. Loving this sword. Really, really does look very, very cool. Look at all that detail on the wings and on the dragon head and the skull bottom. Mine's a bit skewiff, unfortunately. Looks like it's not quite gone on central, but still super stoked. Looks absolutely amazing. You can see you've got the dark grey on the actual handle, hilt, and everything else, and then the blade is a really shiny silver. Very, very nice. This looks so good, and it's just such an amazing sword. Really, really loving this. And then these blast effects. Now, these are pretty cool. They didn't need to add these. Again, everything's a soft rubber, so not going to really hurt yourself on these. But they look really nice. Just kind of a little explosion. And they clip onto the guns. They're designed to go under guns. See, there's a large part at the bottom, a big part there, which kind of fit into that perfectly. But... It also does fit on the shotgun. Not as perfect and goes a bit screw, but from a side angle, that is pretty cool. Maybe do it like that, which is a bit more central. So it's like just this one chamber's firing. Or you could do it that way. So just that chamber's firing, that barrel. But yeah, they are designed to go on the guns. Okay, and have an actual look at Dante himself. This guy looks phenomenal. Really great head sculpt. Now, I'm going to take the light away a little bit because I want to get this look of the hair. See, it is a bit more of a silver instead of like a bright white. I'm going to bring that it just looks white, but no, it does have some grey and kind of silver highlights in there. I'm trying to see the best I can to do that without it being too dark. Oh, there you go. That's probably the best way to do it. And then scrolling down, you can see he's got the vest. Now, I did take the coat off for the purpose of this review. is to show you basically what it looks like without it. And show the detail under the coat. And to be honest, the coat is so heavy, it does kind of pull him to the right. Now, this whole vest here is a completely separate piece. And it is a floating piece. I think it's glued at the back here, but not at the front. Because there is a joint underneath there, and it hides it perfectly. But the paint apps is really nice, fairly clean on most parts, slight blemish here and here, but apart from that, really, really nice. And you can see that you have the rest of the jacket there and the cuffs or the sleeves rather for the jacket. And of course, he's got that black top underneath. There's no detail on the, the shoulders, but I'm okay with that. You know, it doesn't matter. Generally, it's hidden by the coat anyway, so you can't really see that much. But all in all, that waistcoat does look really nice. And then continuing down, you can see the hands there. And like I said, they are literally just gloves which come off. And then you've got flesh plastic there. And then black sleeve. Now, I don't know if they're two separate pieces. Glued together, no. 
One's painted, but I can't tell which. Because the black looks very solid, and the flesh looks very solid. But it all looks really good. That belt buckle looks amazing as well. Great paint apps on that. Quite lighter compared to the rest of him. And nice sculpt throughout. See, he's got straps around his right leg. Not quite sure what they're for. Doesn't really hold any weapons there. Maybe that's where his uh, shotgun goes. I don't know. One thing that's always the mystery of Dante is where does he store his weapons? Because you never see him. But these trousers, they do look really nice. Have some nice paint apps in them. And there's a lot going on with them. You can see that all the texture and the crinkles on the paint apps, like I said. Great sculpt. Now this is, of course, is, as per usual with Neko, soft rubber. And the rest of it is hard plastic. Hides those joints perfectly, yet maintains that articulation amazingly. And you can see, down, you can see the same kind of sculpt on the knees, where it all ruffles up at the boots, and then hiding the sculpt pretty well. Mine's a bit open, but you know, what are you going to do? And then trying to get a close up look on those boots, they're solid black, so it's really hard to really show you. But they are really nice, they have some great details, so some lines going throughout it. I don't know how well they're coming up. But if I lean him back a bit, you can see here that there's lines there going around actually to the toe, which is really nice. And then you've got buckles on the side with some nice paint apps. Very, very, very nice and really well done. Have a look at the back of the boots. You can see there's that seam going down the middle. And like I said, the back of the buckles. Going up there, I've got the back of the legs just hiding a bit of the joints there. Looks really nice. And that strap, again, really well done. It looks amazing. And then, of course, the back of the belt and the arms. Really nice done. Very, very, very neat and tidy sculpt. And then, of course, that waistcoat. Nice little sculpt detail in there, which they didn't need to do, to be honest. Like I said, it's supposed to be hidden on a jacket, and not many companies would go to the extra mile. And then, of course, the back of the hair, you can see it brushed down. Now, one thing I will mention quickly about the hair is it does hinder a little bit as it gets a bit snagged on the actual collar when you're trying to pose and articulate him speaking of articulation this guy has got a ton and i'm very very impressed with what necker have done here the head is on a ball joint going into the head to the neck and that can go up that much down that much pivot and pivot of course you can rotate that around for instance degrees the neck is on a ball joint and go forward that much back that much side side and you could probably rotate it but i'm just not going to do that the shoulders are on butterfly joints to help with those sword poses they can go in that much and out that much only hindered by basically the waistcoat as far as i can see shoulders you can see are on ball joints they can rotate around three and six degrees and they can go up all that way and there's a rotation at the bicep three and six degrees and then a single bend at the elbow of about that much and this cuff here is a soft rubber and then you can rotate that around but as per usual the more you go around the less you get at the elbow and then we have just a peg going in there which kind of pivots from there to there there to there and you can rotate that around three and sixty degrees ideally with a sword posing i'd like a bit more on the wrist but i'm happy with that beside i'm happy with that regardless i meant to say we have a diaphragm joint there, which gives you a bend or a crunch rather of that much forward, that much back, not much left and right to be honest. And you know, what? I'm not sure it is a diaphragm. It kind of doesn't want to move at all. It might just be, I'm mistaken. It is a hinge joint, not a diaphragm joint. So you literally have an ab crunch of that and that. Then there's a waist rotation, 360 degrees, and that belt doesn't get hindered at all. T cut hips. So we can do a Spartan of that, split kick <laughs> of that, 
they are like before, whereas this one goes into this. So if you move just this one, they both move. But if you move this one, only that one moves. So this pegs into that. Apply rotation from there to there, so almost 180. Double joint in the knee, really great sculpt and a very natural looking knee as well. Boot rotation 360 degrees, then there's an ankle ball joint going from there to there, pivot from there to there and you can rotate around 360 degrees. Now this is another accessory which I haven't put on yet because like I said it does really weigh him down and it kind of rests on this corner at all times so it's a bit of a prop does look cool and you can get some cool poses out of it but like I said I just want to show you without him now there's some nice sculpt in there, some lines going through it and some great shading really does look absolutely amazing and it is a soft rubber so it doesn't really get in the way at all but like I said due to it being weighted like that he is constantly at this kind of angle this is probably my major gripe about the figure and I wish they released a, another one with just a straight down coat but the sculpt and the paint apps in this is just phenomenal. Don't know how well that shading is coming over, but every little line, every little bit of knock, or dirt, or dang, all looks absolutely phenomenal and it's really well painted. Just wanted to say with the Cody's articulation isn't hindered any further. The shoulder bicep rotation, sorry, the butterfly joints, still there, not hindered at all. The over the head, not at all. If you look when he's standing. Just super weighted over this side. Okay, so Dante stands literally just a bit over seven inches. Okay, so final thoughts. After finishing this review, that coat is really starting to annoy me a bit more. You're very limited in it's just here the way it's pulling you over to the one side. And I don't know if it's just because my light's so hot that the joints aren't holding that well. But the more you like pose this guy and the more you do the less you're going to get out of him i mean yes you can get some very cool matrix style poses out of him and it is iconic to like i said that screen which i can't remember which one but honestly i definitely prefer just a straight down coat or at least the option maybe an alternative coat and i hope NECA release something like that or as an additional buy or something else or maybe a different version because if it did then i'd definitely buy that uh, more and more, I'm going to definitely probably try and modify mine to have a cloth cape or a synthetic leather cape, something like that. But I just don't know if I'd better match the colour and, well, that well, to be honest. But aside from that, I still cannot recommend this figure enough. Everything else is just absolutely amazing. And, I mean, look at this pose right now. It just looks awesome. <laughs> Everything is just so superb that it looks phenomenal and it's just such a great figure. Worth every penny. NECA has blown this one out of the park still. You have to buy this figure. It's just a must, must buy. Had to be done really, didn't it? Anyway guys, <laughs> that is my time. I hope you've enjoyed this view. It's been a very iconic one and I've really enjoyed it. Loving this figure. So I had a bit of a grab about the coat and I hope you guys can see where I'm coming from in regards to it. But definitely pick this guy up. If you see him, worth every penny still. If you're a fan of Devil May Cry, worth every penny. If you're not a fan of Devil May Cry and you just want a cool figure, worth every penny. Why are you still watching this review? Go and get this figure. <laughs> but definitely, definitely, definitely grab this one. I can't really say this enough and I think I've already said it too much. So anyway, as per usual guys, please check out my partner in reviewing the Mephisto archives. There is a link in the description below. If you'd like to ask me any questions about this figure on my channel, please leave them in the comment section down below also. Thank you for watching. Keep collecting and I'm going to catch you in my next one. Bye-bye. <laughs>